Hey ClearScraps friends, this is Leah Crow today showing the new 2019 Mermaid Tail palette release from ClearScraps. As you can see, I have some gesso that I am applying all over to the background here. Um, I know starting out that I want to use my Distress Oxide ink pads, so I thought that maybe covering it with a little gesso would allow that to move around a little better on the background of this palette. So I'm applying a quite thick coat here and making sure that I get in between the palette slots there and around the sides. Once I get all this covered, I go ahead and pull out my heating tool to help speed up the drying process. This actually took about 10 to 15 minutes for it to dry, so walk away, get a drink, and be patient with your project. Okay, so now we're starting with the Distress Oxide. And if you've used Distress Oxides before, you know uh, spraying water on them activates the oxid oxidation inside of the ink which is a really cool effect. Um, however, I did not think of that. Um, all I was thinking of is I wanted the ink to spread easily across the top of this birch wood. And it wasn't doing that, so I went ahead and sprayed some water down. And although it did help achieve the spreadability of the ink going across the wood a lot better, it kind of, you know, oxidized the ink as I was moving around. So I didn't get quite the effect I was wanting. But as any true crafter knows, in the end, it normally will come together. So I just went with it. There wasn't much I could do at this point, and I kept applying my ink. Um, you'll notice I speed things up here in just a second because uh, I did want that ombre effect. So I will switch into my blue and purple in just a second. And for those colors, I do not add the water down to the wood first because you see I just keep going back over this trying to get a nice rich color and I just can't achieve that. Um, but that's okay because like I said in the end it'll come together. I just got to give it time. To reach the inside of that slat there between the mermaid's tail I go ahead and grab a paintbrush and a little bit of water on my ink pad to create like a little bit of a paint to reach inside of there to paint. And I do the same for the other slats you see there in the video. I go ahead and grab my other ink tool to help soften the edge, the transition between the pink and the blue. And I continue on applying the blue distress ink. You'll see my daughter's hands come in the video here in a second because she likes messing with mom when she's crafting. And I will do the same thing when I transition to the purple. I'll try to soften the color blend, <laughs> there they are, between the purple and the blue. And I'm not a nice crafter. I'm not too good on my tools. So you'll see that as patient as I think I was being, I wasn't because I will just swipe those ink pads right across my project and try to blend later. Um, I guess that's just the type of person I am. Filling in those wood slats with the uh, Distress Ink using the paintbrush again. I noticed in the process of putting blue on, I must have touched it and transferred some blue over to my mermaid's tail at the top. So I just grabbed some more ink in that color and try to cover it up. Now that I'm happy with the color of my mermaid project, I go ahead and grab my water bottle and start spritzing little bits of water across the wood. And you'll notice, on the purple especially, you can see it's starting to react to that distress oxide, which is really cool. Um, I didn't want it to sit there and just soak into the wood, so I grab a paper towel and just lay it and lightly dab at it to pull up the color that was coming up anyways. 
Now I'm just grabbing a clear acrylic sealer gloss. I'll take this outside and spray it about 10 to 15 inches away from the surface. And this is just going to create a barrier between the distressed oxide, which reacts to water, and the glue that I'm about to use, the Mod Podge, so it doesn't start smearing and creating a mess everywhere. I pull out the Clear Scrap 6 inch Fish Scales Massel, and I'm going to be using that to create the Mermaid's Scales. Now using firm pressure, I tried to hold the stencil in place, so when I'm applying the Mod Podge with my paintbrush, over the stencil, it doesn't move on me because I'd like to create a clear scale impression. Once you finish applying the glue, peel away your mask and pour your glitter liberally on top of your wood project. To remove the excess glitter, just stand your project up and tap from the back side to get all that excess glitter onto your scrap piece of paper there. One thing I did notice throughout this project is I didn't clear enough room in my work area to have enough space to move glitter around and I knew that I would be using so much glitter that I didn't want to have to keep pouring it back into my glitter container. So I ended up at, one, at many times having two or three sheets of paper with glitter on there and I would transfer a new piece of paper beneath so I could just keep going. Now that you've established your first section of scales, it's just the process of lining up that stencil, applying your glue, removing it, and applying your glitter. You just repeat this process the whole way through the mermaid's tail. get to the point where I figured I could go ahead and try doing more sections at once with lining up with the stencil if I applied a little bit heavier coat of the glue so it wouldn't dry on me before I got to glitter that section. As I try to add more than one section at a time you'll see that it really is just a process of trying to line up that stencil well to keep that scale transition moving.
Once you finish adding your glitter scales, you're going to want to grab a dry paintbrush so you can brush away any of the stray little glitter pieces that aren't stuck down to the glue very well. To finish up, you're going to want to spray two to three more applications of your clear sealer. This will help prevent any of the glitter to fly off your project later on. To finish up my project, I applied a hidden hanger on the back side of the tail and then applied my granddaughter's name in vinyl. Check out clearscraps.com for more wood palette items and all your muscle needs. Thank you.